Welcome to Electron Online. In this example, we're going to try to find the voltage drops across each of the components in the circuit. Now notice it's a combination of series and parallel branches. So this is a little bit more complicated than if it was just purely a series circuit. So what we're going to do is start out by finding the total impedance of the circuit and then finding the current through the circuit, the main current leaving the source. At that point, we're going to start a second video, perhaps even a third video, to finish the problem. So let's start it in sections that we can easily manage. We're going to start by finding the impedance inside the circuit. To do that, well, let's start with the impedance here. Let's call this Z1. Let's call this Z2. And let's call the impedance over here Z3. So we can break it up like that. So Z1 will be the impedance over here, Z2 will be the impedance there, Z3 will be the impedance there. All right, so Z1 is equal to, we have the real part of 4 ohms for the resistor and an imaginary part of minus 20 ohms. Oh, no, that'll be plus because it's an inductor, so plus 20 ohms in the imaginary direction. So that's Z1. And uh, we're going to have to add that to the parallel branches here, so we'll leave it in this format for now, because there we're going to add the two together. Next, we're going to find Z2. That's fairly straightforward. Z2 is going to be equal to only a real part 16, which can also be written as 16 with a phase angle of 0 degrees, if we want to write in terms of magnitude and phase angle. And then Z3. Now, Z3 is a sum of the capacitor reactants and the inductive reactants. So Z3 is going to be equal to a minus J14 plus a J25, which is equal to a positive J11, which can be written as a magnitude of 11 with a phase angle of a positive 90 degrees. So now what we need to do is we need to find the impedance of the parallel branches. So now we can say the impedance of the two parallel branches is equal to, that will be the product over the sum. So the product will be a Z2 times Z3, that should be a 3, divided by Z2 plus Z3. And so the product Z2, we'll write it like that, that will be 16 with a phase angle of 0 degrees, multiplied times Z3, which would be 11 with a phase angle of 90 degrees divided by the sum of the two and when we want to get the sum we'll use this format right here so let's see here that will be uh, z2 that's 16 plus z3 which is j11 so that will be equal to 16 with a phase angle of 0 degrees multiplied times 11 with a phase angle of 90 degrees divided by and we're going to write this also in terms of magnitude and phase angle so the magnitude would be 16 squared plus 11 squared, take the square root, that would be 19.42, with a phase angle of 11 over 16, take the inverse tangent of that, and we get 34.51 degrees. So now we can go ahead and Calculate the impedance of the parallel branch. That will be 16 times 11 divided by 19.42. And that gives us 9.06 for the magnitude. With a phase angle of 90 minus 34.51. Which is 55.49. And we're going to write this in terms of its uh, real and imaginary parts because we're going to have to add that to the impedance Z1. So we take the cosine of that and multiply that times 9.06 and we get 5.13 for the real part plus the imaginary part, 55.49, take the sine of that and multiply it times 9.06 and we get 7.47. So 
So now we have the parallel branch impedance, we have Z1, we can now find the total impedance by adding Z1 to the parallel branch impedance. So Z total is equal to Z1 plus the parallel branch impedance, which is equal to 4 plus J20, and we add that to 5.13 plus J7.47. And let's see here, that would be equal to 9.13, when we add the real parts together, plus J times, add the imaginary parts together, 27.47. So this here is the total impedance of the circuit. Now we can find the current. We know that the current I is equal to the voltage of the source divided by the total impedance of the circuit. The voltage of the source is 12 volts with a phase angle of 0 degrees divided by the total impedance, which, well, let's see here, we're going to have to find the, convert that to the magnitude and phase angle form, so 27.47, square that, plus 9.13, square that, take the square root of the sum and we get 28.95, 28.95 with a phase angle of 27.47 divided by 9.13. Take the inverse tangent of that, we get 7.16 degrees. See, that's much bigger than that. That doesn't look right. Let me try that again. I think there's something wrong with that. Ah, 71.62 degrees. I messed up the decimal point. 71.6, uh, let's go 1.5 degrees so we don't have a runoff error. So that goes in here for the total impedance, 28.95 with a phase angle of 71.615 degrees. So we take 12 and divide it by 28.95, that gives us the magnitude of the current which is equal to 0 0.415 with a phase angle of minus 71.615 degrees. And of course, that would be in terms of amps. So here we have the total impedance in two formats, magnitude and angle and phase angle in the real part and the imaginary part. And we also have the current flowing to the circuit at 0.415 amps with a phase angle of minus 71.615 degrees. So now we found the total impedance of the circuit, we found the current in the circuit, now the next thing we can do is find the current in each of the two branches. For that, we need to go to the next video. Once we have the current in all of the branches, the two branches and the total current, then we can find the voltage across each of the components. So that's the strategy. So stay tuned for the next video and we'll show you how to do the rest of this problem. And that's how it's done.